Welcome back to Cardiac Imaging Agora. In this very short video, we will try to analyze and to identify all markers of high risk PET scan. So here we have an example of a 61 years old man who uh, showed uh, dyspnea on Hefford and uh, he was submitted for this reason to a stress rest uh, PET scan and the stress was obtained after rubidium um, uh, infusion. And uh, the patient uh, was submitted in the past to a vascularization by PCI stenting on LED and on LCX. As you can see here, the uh, PET images demonstrated a very high, uh, large, area of uh, uh, hypoperfusion after rubidium injection in the LED and on LCX and RCA territory, as you can see here, as you can see here, and as you can see here. So a huge amount of hypoperfusion after stress. While at rest, you can see that there is a normal distribution of the tracer in the wall myocardium. So this is the first uh, analysis that we can obtain after the uh, qualitative interpretation. But there is other very important signs. One is the presence of uh, um, evaluation of the right ventricles. This is an indirect sign of uh, uh, dysfunction of the left ventricle and uh, it's related to the increase of uh, uh, pressure on uh, the um, pulmonary pressure. So uh, this is a very important indirect sign and it's correlated with uh, not good prognosis. So you can see here and here the uh, very good evaluation of the right ventricle. If we analyze this semi-quantitative analysis of uh, the amount of the rubidium, this uh, distribution in the uh, left ventricle, you can see here that there is uh, the uptake present in the septal wall and in the proximal portion of the anterior wall, but in the rest of the heart is not so high like we see before. And the um, quantitative, semi-quantitative score of this uptake is uh, so high that the final amount expressed by the SSS is around 37. It's a very high number, higher than the 10% of uh, risk area. While if we analyze the distribution uh, of the tracer at rest, we can see that the distribution is quite normal. So the SRS summit rest score is one. And the SDS, the distribution, different difference in distribution is about 36. So there is a big area of reversibility that is in the involvement of uh, multivessel territory. And this is the first demonstration of um, the huge amount of ischemia. But as we can see uh, uh, before, and uh, as we can uh, say before, also the uh, uptake of the right ventricle after stress, but also at rest, is an indirect sign of uh, dysfunction. Uh, and uh, it's not uh, a good sign. It's a sign of worse prognosis. But also there is another sign because with the uh, um, myocardial scan, we can evaluate also the gated, the function of the left ventricle. And as you can see here, there is a drop after stress from 25 at rest to 19 uh, after stress. So this drop is related to a post ischemic stunning as, and uh, it's not a good sign, but there is another important sign that is related to LV dilation post-stress. So as you can see here, there is a huge amount of uh, the volume after uh, stress uh, on of end diastolic volume as well as of end systolic volume. This is another sign of worse prognosis. But the other sign is related to the severe LV dysfunction 
at rest and post-stress. This is another important sign, as, as you can see here from the uh, LV curves. And uh, so you can imagine that we have in this chemical uh, cascade, big area of uh, hypoperfusion, that is the first step. So we have LV dysfunction, second step, LV function, third step, and all the step in this chemical scale are covered by our PET analysis. At least we can observe also the uh, severe coronary calcification obtained by the CT analysis. And this is the last uh, variable that we can obtain with one stop shop technique. Thank you very much for your attention.